Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a reading vlog. However, the four books that are going to be in today's reading vlog were all picked by different book creators. Most of them are booktubers, but I know one of them, Cameron, she just does Instagram and TikTok. I reached out to four different creators and I asked them to pick a book for me that I should read this week. I reached out to Sarah, I reached out to Amina, I reached out to Larissa, and I reached out to Cameron. Sarah ended up picking The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This book has been on my TBR for a while, not because I know anything about it, but simply because I think the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I think the FMC is the bodyguard though. Hannah Brooks looks more like a kindergarten teacher than somebody who could kill you with a wine bottle opener or a ballpoint pen or a dinner napkin. But the truth is she's an executive protection agent, AKA bodyguard and she just got hired to protect superstar actor Jack Stapleton from his middle-aged corgi breeding stalker. Next, I asked Amina to pick me a book and she actually gave me two different options. I went ahead and went with her second option, which was to serve with love. This rom-com is about this girl whose dad dies and then I think this like investor or guy, wealthy man comes in and is trying to like buy out the restaurant or the property and she's like I don't just want to let my dad's work go to waste. And she's like, this man is so freaking annoying. I'm assuming that's the MMC. I was right about the fact that someone is coming in trying to buy her dad's business, but I was wrong about who the MMC was. I thought the, you know, like the snooty business owner, owner I thought it would be like Hallmark style where the snooty business owner, they fall in love and then they end up running the business together or something. I'm wrong. Someone is coming in to try and buy the business. However, the MMC in this book is someone she met on a blind dating app only to realize their online chemistry is nothing compared to their online rivalry. What the f does that mean? Gracie seeks advice and solace from someone she's never met, the faceless sir she connected with on a blind dating app, where matches get to know each other through messages and common interests before exchanging real names and photos. Okay. But although Gracie finds herself slowly falling for sir online, his name is just sir? Is he older? Is this age gap or does he just have a complex? She has no idea that she's already met him in real life. Oh my god! I might have been right about my first my first thought of the book. Then I'm going to be reading Still Beating. This is what Larissa picked for me. This book has actually been on my TBR for a while. It's a dark romance. I'm pretty sure it's like two people who don't like each other at all, but then they both get taken. I think there's going to be trauma bonding in this book. That's the vibe I'm getting, but let, let me tell you, I'm here for trauma bonding. And then lastly, Cameron picked for me a book that I would never pick for myself, but I'm actually so excited for, The Bronze Horseman. It's definitely a love story. Is it like a political, not a political love story? Kind of an older love story. Oh, I know the word I was looking for, like a war love story. There's a war going on. She's probably in love with a soldier. Tatiana and Alexander's impossible love threatens to tear the Metanova family apart and expose the dangerous secret Alexander so carefully protects. A secret as devastating as the war itself. How deep is that secret if it is as devastating as a war? As the lovers are swept up in the brutal tides that will exchange the world and their lives forever. We're gonna start with To Serve With Love. Oh, she calls him sir and he calls her lady. Listen, you're gonna hear that and you're gonna be like, that's kind of cringy. As was my first initial thought in my brain. However, I actually kind of think it's fun. She's talking to her friend. So there's this dating app. Friend goes, Tinder? No. Hinge? No. eHarmony? No. It's called Mystery Mate. <laughs> oh, I don't like the sound of this at all. There's no good use for the word mate outside of the Discovery Channel and fantasy romance. Where did you two meet, Mystery Mate? I would take that to my grave. <gasps> we are eight pages in. And I am shocked. Eight pages in and you already have my jaw dropping? Bro, there are messages that they, are they emailing or are they texting? I don't know, they're messaging still on the dating app. And they speak in, why did I nearly say tongues? They speak in, mm, like old timey. They see things like, Yours and yearning. What is it you yearn for? But it's actually, it's not cringy. Like it's not cringy at all. You just heard that and you were like, what? Why do they speak like that? Like yours and yearning? Who the f says that? I don't know, but I'm kind of in love with them for saying it. Here's the thing. <laughs> this is how delusional I am. Maybe this isn't delusional. Maybe this is smart. If I was talking to hot man online, didn't know who he is. And then hot annoying man 
who I like slowly started to have a crush on would come into my life, I would automatically put two and two together. I would pick out every small detail from each and make them be the same person in my head. Okay? She's not even thinking, and I don't even know where he's at. It's not a dual POV book. She's not even thinking like it could be him, you know? And I don't think she will for a really long time. I'm not even that far into the book. But removing myself as a reader and putting myself into her shoes and what I would do if I was her, I, they would be the same person to me. This is him. And in my case, it wouldn't be him. It would be some like old pervert who I never want to speak to again once I find out who he actually is. But in my fictional little fantasy delusional world, I would be like, oh my God, it's him. Is this making any sense? She says two unattainable men in my life. My brain would go, they're both unattainable. They're the same person. A wholesome book based in New York City is so heartwarming to me for some reason because I feel like all my favorite childhood shows growing up were based in New York City. How I Met Your Mother, Gossip Girl, which Gossip Girl is like way more dramatic, but speaking on How I Met Your Mother, that's one of my favorite TV shows ever. I love how it's in the city. I love how it's like a bustling, is that a right word? Like a fast paced environment, but you still get the coziness of the characters in that show. The coziness of that is what I'm getting from this book. Good morning. Someone recently said on TikTok that these look like hooves. <laughs> and I can't unsee it now. Still gonna wear them, still gonna wear them in public. However, when I put them on, I'm like, my hooves are on. I finished to Sir with love yesterday and I wanted to give a little recap on it and rating. At the moment, five star book. I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did. This is also a book that I probably never would have picked up if it wasn't for Amina. I wanna read this quote that is on page 242 and it just speaks volumes about the main character and I feel like some people can relate to this. A me a year ago could really relate to this. I've been living in a bit of a fantasy world. My tendency to focus on what could be rather than what is. My hesitancy to really truly throw myself into things that matter the most out of fear they won't live up to what I've built up in my mind. I don't necessarily do that as bad where I stay away from things simply because of the fear that it won't live up to the story that I've kind of written and built up in my head because in my head, it's stories playing continually. Like there's always a inner monologue, an inner story being written. If I have something that I need to do or someone that I need to meet, like my brain can be really bad about writing out ex like a script basically for how that interaction will go. I've gotten so much better about that, but it was so interesting seeing that written down and seeing like a character who does that and being like, wait, those are, th that's, I do that. If you want a book that is under 300 pages to serve with love, ended up starting The Bronze Horseman. And this is the one Cameron recommended. So far, I'm loving it. This is technically a love story and a romance, but it's one of those books where there's so much more going on. I got 82 pages into it last night because I really couldn't put it down. The way it's written is really intriguing. There's war going on between the Soviet Union and the Germans in this book. You hear that and you're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm taken back into high school and we're in history class. And you're mentioning a war and I'm gonna have to use my brain okay you actually don't really have to use your brain like it's so well written it's very intriguing also there is a love triangle in this book i'm going to try and read it over the span of four days i don't know if this is necessarily like a bingeable type of book so far it is but it might kind of like shift a little bit so i'm gonna read a little bit of this this morning probably like 50 to 100 pages and then start still reading because this book is set at a different time. It's a different time, okay? It was a different time. Tatiana is 17 years old and Alexander, MMC, is 22. Um, but it was a different time, okay? It was a different time. I feel like we hear so many grandparents nowadays who are like, I was a 20, and it's very much the story, like I was a 22 year old soldier and then I saw your grandmother across the way and she was eating ice cream and I just knew that was my woman. And you're like, oh, grandpa, like how old was grandma? And he's like, she was 15 years old. And you're like, grandpa, that is so great. You're like, grandma, are you okay? You've 
married for like so long, are you okay? Um, yeah, she's 17, thankfully not 15. So if you read this, you have to tell yourself different time. I mean, Tatiana is graduated and a working woman at 17. And I think she was technically at 16. Taking a intermission on the Bronze Horseman, I got about 170 pages into it. And I'm gonna start still beating, which it's on my Kindle because it's free on Kindle Unlimited. I think this book is only 313 pages. It's currently 115. It'll be done by tonight. I'm just saying. I feel like I could read like a decent amount before four and then I will binge the rest when I like go to bed tonight. I'm like very much in a dark romance era time period. I'm loving dark romance at the moment. So I am very grateful that I asked Larissa specifically to give me a dark romance recommendation. Oh my God, holy sh I didn't even mean to read the first page, but I did. And the MMC is her sister's fiance. Her sister's fiance? Bro! She likes to lay in that window seal because the sun beats down in there. It's like a, a sauna. I don't know how she doesn't die in there or cook like a hot pocket because it's still almost 100 degrees in Texas and she'll lay in there for hours. I love when the character in a book is a bookworm. The FMC in Still Beating. I'm a bookworm who would much rather purchase adorable outfits for our family dog than for myself. I love it. When a character in a book reads books, it makes me feel so seen and connected immediately. And it, I feel it does that for all readers. Like we just automatically feel connected. Yeah. Cook you for breakfast. You're my next meal. You're not allowed on the sofa. God, this man is such an... He's like... Not great. I'm just sister's fiance. Like what, how, I'm just, how, English, how is this gonna go? And him and the sister have been together for a long time. So how is this man about to hold me off to the other sister? I'm curious as to how that's gonna play out. Going into this book, I thought they were going to be like a rich, family and that's why like they were getting targeted for some reason that's the reason why these dean and cora got taken but they're not necessarily like wealthy people i think they're just unlucky people dean is a blue collar man so th that's a no to that dean is a well-respected employee in the union doing road construction he's a blue collar man i love a blue collar man i do This man sings. He sings and I'm not even mad about it. You want to know why? Because he knows what her favorite song is and he's singing her favorite song. This book is fast paced at the start. I feel like so much has already happened. What else is going to happen? Can we go down from here or does it go up from here? Because it's already pretty low. The bar is in the basement right now. Still beating. However, how do I word this properly? Books where there is such a toxic relationship at a certain point, it can be like for a little bit in the book or it can be for a lot of it in the book. I'm saying that because I'm not giving you any spoilers, but there is some toxicity between the main characters in this book, obviously because of what they have to go through. Toxic relationships is the reason why I can't read the Magnolia Park series. Listen, Sarah, if you're watching this video, I'm so sorry. That's like the one person that comes to my mind that loves that series so much. I tried the first book. I think I got like a, only a couple chapters in and it was like so toxic, not toxic, but I could tell it was going in such a toxic direction. I couldn't do it. There was like a slight toxic relationship in this book and it worked out at the end. And the book was written very well and I'm gonna rate it three and a half stars because I did enjoy myself, but I was sick to my stomach for so long. Maybe I'm just, I also have a nausea problem, so maybe I'm the problem. I was sick to my stomach. I love a good trauma bonding. <laughs> I love a good trauma bonding. Real life too. Listen, I'm here for it. You might read this book and be like, they're just trauma bonded. 
maybe, but live life in the moment, okay? Some of the triggers that were present at the beginning of this book kind of felt like haunting or hunting Adeline level. When I say check the trigger warnings, I mean check them. Now it's time for Sarah's pick, and I have to say I'm the most excited for this one simply because it's a bad FMC. I love a woman that doesn't look threatening, but is incredibly threatening and could beat the sh out of you. <gasps> I love this man! I love this man! Hey, what are you staring at? I love him! <laughs> I love him! He's making me giggle, but I've also pictured Chris Evans and I'm loving him! <laughs> Listen, I've loved this man from the start. I was gonna go read at a coffee shop today, but then the man was begging on his knees by page 62, and I knew I'd be giggling like a little girl in public if I went to a coffee shop. And so I've been sitting here in my bedroom reading this book, giggling like a little girl. This man is begging. This man is begging. He's on his knees. He's begging! Jack Stapleton, the Jack Stapleton was on his knees begging. Stop begging, I'll be your girlfriend. Fake dating? Tropes are so far that I'm recognizing. We got a bad FMC. We got fake dating. The author doesn't put a one bed trope in here, what are you doing? Heather, future Heather, is there a one bed trope? I'm only 66 pages into it, but it kind of feels, or I'm feeling the same way I would when I'd read an Emily Henry book. And that's fitting because Emily Henry kind of reviewed it on the front of this book. When Jack found out that Hannah was gonna be his bodyguard, he was like, but you're so small. And she's like, okay. And he's like, okay, prove it to me. I'm getting very much golden retriever vibes from him. And then Hannah, just black cat energy. Black cat struggles to let people in energy. He said then, staring straight into my eyes with intensity, I would combust. Please don't make eye contact with me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa! It's so <laughs> I swear, sometimes I read way too many slow burn books. So then when characters kiss, like, over 200 pages into the book, I'm like, what's with the insta-love? Because I'm used to characters kissing on, like, the last couple pages and then it, like, ending, you know? So that's my love of slow burn, man. So then characters kiss and I'm like, stop the insta-love! It's not insta-love. It's been over 200 pages, girl. This girl is so me. This girl is so me. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you I have a thing for you. And I'm telling you that doesn't make any sense. Oh wait, this is, that is really wholesome. So wholesome, we got a highlight. I haven't annotated a book in so long because I've just found, I was about to say the art of annotating. What kind of professor f is that? Because I've just found that annotating has been so boring. Like I haven't enjoyed it in months. The last book I annotated was Beach Read for my friend. And that was because I was doing it for my friend, which is different than like doing it for pure enjoyment. At the beginning of this year, I used to like have those sticker things, have the highlighters ready. I would be like marking the f out of my books. I haven't annotated for myself in so long. It sounds miserable, but saying this because I kind of want to reread this already and annotate all of it. That means something. I don't know what, but it means something. I read ahead. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I'm actually so mad at myself right now. I already read that line, but that is just as shocking the second time. Hmm, this is interesting, let me tell you. Bodyguard is done, and I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. This was like such a cute and wholesome book, but also at the same time kind of being a good book for a palate cleanser. And now a book that I think I'll recommend to people when they want a book to help them get out of a reading slump. Maybe I'm just dramatic, but there was a lot of moments in this book where I was like, <gasps> Oh my God, it gave me like shaky breath because I couldn't believe what I was reading. Like it wasn't that dramatic of writing, 
But some of the things I was just like, what the f This book, about right there, it is 810 pages. I'm having flashbacks to when I was reading A Little Life. That was, I think that was the last book that I read that was absurdly long. I'm having a little bit of flashbacks even though they have nothing in common but a lot of sadness in them. This is very much a book that I did not expect to like. This is the second love triangle book that I have read this week. I normally despise love triangle books, so what are the odds that when I ask people to pick books for me, two of them pick a love triangle? Triangle, okay? The love triangle, again, 360 pages into a book. This is it. Like, this isn't gonna make any sense. Okay, this is it. This is the triangle. This has been the triangle for 360 pages. <laughs> I need it for it to be this. One incentive that I can say to you that's not necessarily, it could be a spoiler, so skip 20 seconds, skip to here if you don't wanna know anything. He does full on save this girl from like bombing. She like legit gets caught up into the war and where she was at gets bombed and he straight up pulls her out of the trenches, out of the trenches. Carries her like three kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles, but he like carries this girl where she needs to go to get the medic help that she needs. This book is kind of like a roller coaster, like the loop-de-loop -loop in a roller coaster, <laughs> except for the fact that you're just going around and around and around, and you guessed it, around, and it's still still going. I kind of feel like the same issues that were had at the beginning of the book, they're obviously still the same issues that are happening at the almost halfway point where I'm at. And I feel like it's gonna be like that till the end. And some of the things that are happening, I'm like, I could see how someone could think this was a little repetitive. I'm eating it up. I'm loving it. It is just the same loop over and over again, which sounds very boring, but I'm enjoying it. Kind of like when I text my best friend Georgia three times a week and I'm like, oh, how are we single? And then we discuss that topic as if we've never discussed it before. It's kind of like this book. <laughs> like if the same topic will come up or the same issue will kind of arise. It's like I've never read it before. <laughs> I'm predicting this to be a five star read. Cameron, are you trying to kill me? I have never felt so much anxiety reading a book before. Like I'm feeling this in, like right here. It's right here, all of this anxiety. All, uh, and I feel, I felt sick to my stomach for the past three days reading this. I'm a little bit over page 600. I have like 200 pages left. Um, and I'm constantly on the verge of tears. So that's cool. <laughs> I knew it. I, Cameron, what the f are you doing to me? Why I haven't felt this many emotions in like seven, Years. Have I ever felt this many emotions? Oh my god, it's like anger and rage, but also like love. <laughs> and hope, but also no hope. The opposite of hope. And I feel a lot of betrayal. But also I don't feel that. What's the opposite of betrayal? What is the opposite of betrayal? Loyalty. Oh my god, yeah, that's the great, that's the perfect word. I feel so much loyalty, but I also feel so much like equally the same amount of betrayal. I just don't know what to feel. I feel like it's like a mosh pit. It's like this. Tatiana being so young, this girl like, she got a brain. She does. Well, she's not that young, she's like 18 now. The girl has a brain and she actually thinks things through, which I respect her a lot for that. Eating tater tots for lunch today with some random sauce that came with my dinner like three nights ago from a restaurant. Mmm! Don't even know what that is. I have 100 pages left of the Bronze Horseman. I did start it up at like 8.30 this morning after Phineas and I went for a walk. And I've just been carrying the burden that is within this book all day. So, to cheer myself up, because I can't for the life of me find a TV show that I wanna watch. I swear I've been like starting a few, stopping and then starting another and then stopping and I'm just, I'm tired of starting new things. I'm about to rewatch The Vampire Diaries if I keep this up, or Gilmore Girls. Anyways, I've been watching Rachel's YouTube video. Her random number generator chooses how many hours I read. She is just such a bright soul. How can I feel happiness after the despair that is this book? And I was like, let's catch up on Rachel's YouTube videos. I'm 
gonna give The Bronze Horseman five stars. This was the most emotional book I've ever read. Honestly, I felt more reading this than I did reading A Little Life. The writing was so good and so descriptive, I felt like I was there. I don't wanna be there. Normally you read books and you're like, I wanna be there, put me in that world. No, thank you. I don't wanna be there, I don't wanna be in that world. Um, so to feel like I was there the entire time was kind of sickening. I feel so knowledgeable about this war, genuinely. I don't really have many more words to say about this because I still feel very sick to my stomach. So what I am gonna say is, love this book, 10 out of 10 recommend. I'm gonna read the next one, but I think I'm gonna give myself a month hiatus before I start it because I'm not emotionally prepared for that. Thank you to all the book girlies who recommended me books to read throughout this video. Every single one of them I loved. And thank you guys for watching today's video. I'll see you next week.